as a buyer and seller of vintage patterns for a better part of 10 years, there are two things I know about this business. Number one, if you don't have pattern pieces, you don't have a pattern. And number two, if you don't have the instructions, you also basically don't have a pattern. Because instructions seem to be the most integral part of a pattern experience. So I decided, let's go ahead and try and make this 1930s pattern that doesn't have instructions. Now, I can hear you on the other end going, Stephanie, you have a YouTube channel. It's based on sewing things. Don't you know what you're doing? Number one, yes, I have been sewing since I was eight. Embroidery and cross stitch. That's what I've done since I was eight. Occasionally, I've made a few dresses that my mother would finish and a coat that I basically cut out and hemmed and my mother did everything else. Number two, I went to theater school. Surely they taught me how to sew there. I am not saying they didn't. However, I primarily went for stage management, not wardrobe. Now, it was my secondary focus. Third dairy focus, whatever. You had to do one and then pick two others and it was lighting and wardrobe for me. However, that just meant that I got really good at closures, labels, and quick changes. Number three, but you have a YouTube channel based on sewing and patterns. Clearly that means that you know everything because the internet can't be wrong. I am here to share my sewing experiences with you, not necessarily to teach you things about sewing. Now I can absolutely teach you some things about patterns and I am doing my best to do that. However, sewing, not my primary skill, but we're gonna do it anyway. So of course I picked a 1930 McCall pattern because let's just make life a little bit harder for me. And while it isn't going to be the most difficult, it is going to prove quite challenging. Now, I did give myself the 1930 McCalls mainly because they've been printing on their patterns. So this tissue will have all the quote instruction I need, not really, but it'll have some type of guidance on the pattern pieces themselves. Number two, this thing has like six pieces. So it can't be that hard, right? She says nervously, very concerned. She just jinxed herself. And the final question, but why wouldn't you just do this on an unprinted sewing pattern to show us truly just how, no, I'm just gonna stop you there because that actually makes me very nervous. Could I probably figure it out? Yes. However, I, I don't see it going well. I mean, I'd be happy to do it for you if you so choose. Let me know in the comments if you wanna see me attempt to make an unprinted pattern as well. But for today, we're just gonna stick to our 1930s McCall. The materials. 1930s McCall pattern, fabric from the 1940s that I didn't use. Buttons from the 1950s that I also didn't use. Why am I showing them to you? I don't know. Moving on. The rules. Number one, no asking for help. Number two, no using the internet to ask for help. Number three, no sewing book to use for help. Basically, I want mission accomplished by myself. And now that we've covered the rules, we're gonna go ahead and welcome you to the dog zone. Also known as the fact that I have a dog in my lap and there's fabric on the floor in front of me and I have to attempt to figure out how to cut this thing out and lay it on the fabric. I'm also gonna do you the favor of removing all the audio and giving you some aesthetically pleasing shots while I attempt this because I don't really think you wanna hear me cursing at myself for having this idea. While I have about five yards of this beautiful 1940s check cotton, it was 34 inches wide. So I tried to lay out my pieces, pin it in place and check and see if I had enough. It was not. That's not enough fabric. So now I gotta go find a different one. So instead I went with this 1950s floral cotton, which I had about six yards of and was 42 inches wide. But there was a long printing flaw on one side, so I had to work around that. It was at this point that I realized just how big these sleeves truly are. 
After doing my best girl on a hot rod but without the rod pose, I figured I should probably stop stalling. Now I did opt to go against the straight of grain markings because I didn't have enough fabric that wasn't damaged, of course. I would absolutely not advise this change unless you intend to make those little sleeve stiffeners from the 1930s because they were definitely a little bit droopy. Once I double checked that the skirt pieces would actually fit, I ended up cutting everything out. Ah, welcome to the next time that I bothered to touch this project. <laughs> because avoidance closet. Avoidance closet. But isn't it so pretty? No, but seriously, uh, I definitely am a little scared to attempt this, but we're just, we're just going to do it. And that's going to be the way it's going to go. So now that it's all cut out, I guess uh, I should stop stalling and actually do the thing. Which, thankfully, because I have this, like, imprint of terror in my brain of all the darts I've had to do and failed at, um, I do actually know what the first step is without being told! <laughs> I guess that means I have to start the darts now. I use my ruler and friction pen to mark the darts because I couldn't be bothered to do Taylor's tax for that. Don't ask me why, just wasn't feeling it. So fun fact, I have not sewn a single thing yet, and I'm already very afraid. Because, um, this piece right here says, and I quote, Stitch to position for casing, turn under here, insert cording here. Is that before or after I sew it to something else? I'm, I'm very nervous now because the only facing piece that I saw was like this dude so so do I just do I, I'm just gonna sew the darts why did I think I could do this again okay it's it's fine it's fine the only thing that does make me feel slightly better is that all of the notches are numbered so I just go in order of the numbers on the page. So we start up here with the shoulder seams after, of course, I actually turn on the sewing machine and do the darts, which I haven't done yet. So I should probably do that and stop avoiding it. All right, with the darts done, I now realize that stitch to position one, two here on my little tissue. It makes sense to stitch along the stitching edge here that you can see along the eye edge. Because if you don't, then you'll have like some weird hand stitching shenanigans that has to happen at the neck. And that's a pain in the butt and I don't want to do it. So I'm going to stitch all the way along here from one to two. And let's see if it says to ease. Uh, where's the back? Meh. Yes. Okay. So the front should be straight. And the back says for the shoulder, ease here. So thank you, 1930s McCalls, for helping me with that. So I've sewn one seam. It's like 130. This is going well. So what's next, Stephanie? Well, number three is on the side back here, which is sort of hard to see. And I have my coffee in my hand, so you can't see it. So hang on. There you go. So what does it say, Stephanie? says, uh, for opening, leave left side free below circle. Did I mark the circles? No. No, I didn't. I just completely pulled this off. So I'm going to go ahead and quit, do a quick mark, and then we will leave the left side free, but we will do the side seams next. And then I have to find number four, which I don't know where that is. That's eight. Instead of more fruitlessly searching for numbers that I couldn't be bothered to keep looking for, I got to some marking and sewing the side seams together. Now you see it, now you don't. It's like magic. Magic. Oh, good. <clears throat> the, the front 
Uh, yeah, great. Love that. Four is the facing for the front. Uh, I don't... Uh, I didn't think I'd have to deal with this necessarily, but here we are. So the facing says, obviously you cut two pieces. Great. Cool did that. Winning! Next it says, like, it has number four. And it has all the... Like, you're supposed to seam it around all four sides. But only this section, to my knowledge, is supposed to be sewn down. So... <laughs> so I'm going to do what I do with other facings. I am going to seam it on this side, this long side. I'm going to seam it on the short... Short, no, no, I'm not going to seam it on the short side. Because the short side will be sewn to the skirt section, so that'll be fine. But I think I have to seam two sides. So I think I have to seam this one. Let me see. I, I don't know how long this piece is. So. so now that I've laid it on top of one another, I am going to seam it along the long side only. And hope that that's right. Because I think this top piece right here... When I roll it over, should be encased. This is probably not going to be the prettiest garment ever, so I'm just going to be okay with it. And we're going to move past it! Yay! Stop talking and do it. And I wouldn't want to be totally reckless, so I did go ahead and mark the center of the garment. I also realized that unless I wanted the craziest, kookiest, pain in the buttiest buttons ever, I should probably, you know, interface this front where all the buttonholes are gonna go so that I don't make a big giant pain in the butt for myself later on. And then with everything ironed and ready, and some editing magic, the facing is all done. Ah! Now, I have completed my little facing bit. And uh, when I look at this, like the neckline shenanigans could possibly be next. It could be sleeve bits. The problem with the sleeve is that even on the side here, that says number 12. And the waistline says number 8. If on any planet you think that I am going to attach this giant skirt before I attach the tiny sleeves that involve me shoving it into my damn sewing machine, you are incorrect! So I will be deviating from my little number system here. Could it bite me in the butt? Don't know! Very possible. I just don't know if I want to deal with the casing first. No, I think I want to deal with sleeves and then casing, because I don't want to make all this bunchy and weird, possibly, and then have it screw this up, because I already have problems enough with sleeves. Let's not make it any harder for myself than I have to. Also, because I can't find anything between four and eight. It might be on the skirt and just seaming all those sides together, but I can do that before I get to attaching it. I'm not super concerned. I am concerned about this sleeve. So... The sleeve is like the size of both bodices combined. It's for me for reference. That's pretty big. All to be in like two sleeves. Oh, uh, yeah, stress. Um, logically thinking, you would run the gathering lines, then attach these before you pull it. Then gather, no, yes. Then gather this, then do the sleeve and insert elastic. What? No, you did not tell me to get elastic on the back of this, did you? No, you said cording. You dirty liars. I hope I have enough mask elastic to still do this. I mean, I guess I should have figured that out just by the amount of poof, but. Spoiler alert, I didn't. But pressing on, get, get it, press, pressing, no, okay, great, we're gonna move on. I had measured my pattern to see that the channel for the elastic was one half inch, and I pressed the three eighth inch seam allowance 
over itself so that when I was going to sew along it, I could do a fake top stitch all the way around and creating that nice channel for the elastic to go into. And because the pattern wasn't throwing me enough curveballs, my puppy, who has been spayed recently, won't stop scratching at the little incision. So I had to make her some shorts of shame to help her heal. Welcome to day three. You're welcome because I put makeup on my uh, travel-sized bags under my eyeballs. I was woken up by my tiny human at midnight so that she could go to the bathroom. In my bathroom for some reason, even though she has her own. So, I'm tired, but I have to finish this thing today. So this is the Stephanie you get. You get the non-makeup, well, vaguely non-makeup chapstick because I couldn't be bothered face. And we're gonna do a lot of sewing today. I will say last night, I did put on one sleeve what I find interesting is that the gathering is actually decorative, so it's outside the seamed edge. So I didn't pull it. With the gathering threads, what I did was I actually backstitched so that they will all stay in place. And then I gathered this down with elastic. I will show you how I did that on the other one. But uh, I have the other sleeve, the neck situation, and all of the skirt to do. <laughs> oh yeah, and installing a zipper and adding buttons. Um, so I have a lot of work, so I should shut up and get sewing. So now I'm gonna take my sleeve that's fully attached, 12 inches of elastic, and two stabby alligators. And we're gonna feed it all the way through. One stabby alligator onto that end of the elastic. Like this. So I have a little bit more purchase. And then that other stabby alligator is going to go onto the other end. And then clips onto the opening that I have made in my channel. Ba -doop -boop. Then we take that original stabby alligator and we're going to go ahead and start feeding it through. This takes way longer than it looks. I will speed this whole thing up. Do, 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 do. Now, once you have this all the way through, you take this stabby alligator off and don't do that. Oh crap, where'd it go? Where'd it go? Now we insert me desperately looking for the end of my elastic for approximately far too long. And there it is. Now you take your original stabby alligator and you then stab the other end so that way, you know, it doesn't do what I just did. Now you're going to go ahead and pull on hopefully the looser end and you will form a knot so that way that elastic doesn't try and do that Houdini that it just pulled on me. Okay, sleeves are done. Two sleeves attached. Now to deal with this thing. It says stitch to position for casing turn under here. So what I'm thinking this means is that I turn it along this line and then I just stitch it down with the, I don't know, the raw edge being out seems weird. But double turning it like you did the straight one isn't gonna lay nearly as nicely. So I guess I'm just gonna do what it says. I don't know, that feels kind of wrong. I feel like I should double turn it and clip it because it's on a curve and that's not gonna lay really nice at all. I don't know, we're gonna turn it and see how it goes. Now this neckline situation had to be begun with how everything has been begun on this pattern, measuring. And so thankfully, since I had already measured my sleeve elastic, it actually was the exact same differentiation. One half inch for the channel and three eighths of an inch for the actual seam allowance. Now, as I tried to fold this over and get it to go into place, the entire time in my head I could hear, this is wrong, this is wrong, this is wrong. However, I didn't know how to fix it. And since I had given myself the aforementioned rules at the beginning of basically no asking for help, I pushed forward for better, for worse. 
Uh, yeah, I still don't think what I did was correct because I just basically folded it over and put a seam down it, which pretty sure that's not right. But it's what we did. And by we, I mean me. And because I get an E for effort, this is the only image that I have of me sewing these skirt pieces when I was sort of tired. In three, two, one, shit. Y'all, I just seamed together an entire side of a skirt and it was not the center back of it. Cute. Now I get to rip it all out. And of course, because I was trying to hold true to a more 1930s stitch length, I had shortened my stitch length to the number two on my Bernina, which meant that ripping out this one side of the skirt was a bigger pain in the ass than it should normally be for me. And now with the center back of the skirt actually back to back, I went ahead and finished that up. With all my skirt panels attached now, we had to do the gathering. No, not the weird, creepy horror film, actually gathering the skirt down. And this one, as opposed to the sleeve, had two lines of gathering stitches as opposed to the one on the sleeve. Whether or not that was correct, unclear, but it's what I did. I would also just like to take a moment and acknowledge that I managed to not only install both sleeves, but also the bodice and the skirt without having to rip apart something because I shoved the flat section under where the gathering should be. Anyone? No? Doesn't matter. I'm proud of myself. And now comes the part of the video where I have run out of patience to film things. So just imagine me doing a hem, doing buttons, and sewing the zipper into place. But let's move on to more exciting things. The reveal. So what are my takeaways from this? First off, that it's even possible. I was dubious from the beginning that I was even really going to be able to make anything that even vaguely looked like a dress. And I will say, except for a couple items, I actually did shock even myself. Were the gathering stitches the straightest thing you've ever seen? No, no, definitely not. Uh, was the neckline dubious? Absolutely it is. And did I hem the whole thing with a machine stitch? Why, absolutely yes, I did. However, at the end of the day, I think this still came away really lovely. And the wonderful model you see here is my lovely friend. She goes by miss.rm.tenorio on Instagram. I would absolutely advise that you go check out her sewing adventures as well. That's why I felt comfortable giving this to her because I knew that even if I screwed it up, she would be able to figure it out because she's been doing this a whole lot longer than I have. So I felt like it was going to good hands. Yes, indeed, folks, it is possible to make a fully completed dress from a 1930s pattern without instructions. If you enjoyed this content today, please do make sure that you are clicking that like button, being sure to subscribe to see future episodes of I don't know what this is called. If you have ideas for names, please go ahead and toss them down in the comments below. And make sure you turn on the bell so that way YouTube might actually notify you when I have a new video. Thanks so much for watching, folks. We'll see y'all next time. I just make everything in front of a camera and we see what happens. Have you seen my outtakes? Have you watched a sewing project? It doesn't always go to plan. Actually, no, it never goes to plan. Well, now that we've covered the rules, welcome to the dog zone. <laughs> okay, we'll do that again. I also apologize if you've only heard dog licking for the entire time. I helped you. Nom, 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 noms. Okay. I need to stop being distracted now. I'm not even on TikTok. Sure, just everyone have a race all at once. That's cool. That'd be great. I'm really good at planning lots of things. Apparently sewing projects aren't one of them. Uh, why did I think I was capable of doing this? Existential crisis for one. That's the tour. Ow, on my hip. Now I need the audio. I'm old. Now I need the audio.
no, no audio for this. <laughs>